itself has its own importance in the governing of the country and as such the economic power of the country. What we have seen that different scams, as we have seen the main which is, uh, came in the limelight was the Satyam the company scam, which has exposed so what is the loopholes in the corporate governance as such? I will just uh, briefly say, it all boils out out of the individual integrity, credibility and the honesty with which we all are working. My current British speaker is uh, Mr. Tripathi who has spoken regarding uh, the individual's credibility which matters when the corporate governance is talked about. And then the decisions taken in the board of directors. The, the board room itself has the policy making center in the corporate governance is concerned and which has been really diluted to a larger extent today and which we all know what happens in many scams one after another following these days. I'll say even the the principles of corporate governance should which is though in a little manner, little way, is coming in the governance of the country as such in the political scenario. But it has uh, lost its luster in all the way and that became uh, the say of the time that we don't believe on the credibility of the uh, system. I should uh, just point out one thing. What I feel is that most of the, in the corporate governance, what we have seen, many of the, the like three organs of the state, as the legislature, executive, as well as the judiciary, after the retirement, people have been taken into as the uh, directors, in, uh, in, uh, nominee directors in the board, and they have just been as a, we can say as a symbol uh, to project their own company or in any manner we can say. And it is the post retirement benefits which have been given, or the uh, lost for the lost for the post retirement benefits, which is actually been. so. My only suggestions from this podium is to this other day that we should not have, we should see a person who is holding the very, very uh, responsible post in either of the organs of the state, either in the judiciary or in the bureaucracy or in the legislature. They should be able to see behind themselves, look behind themselves to do something for the society what they have got for such a long, long period. So only I suggest from this podium is that we should have a, we should devise a way where from the people who holds the office up to their retirement age should not be under an excess with the government or anything. They should be given a post retirement uh, uh, office, uh, office to office firm, uh, official firm. So this is my only suggestion uh, from this group. Thanks a lot. You should be in a position to I am not clear, I am only one thing. <laughs> if I don't do these things, then <laughs> only one speaker will be speaking. <laughs> whatever, whatever I speak on behalf of chair. <laughs> there should be check and balance. Myself is a part of here. Yes. There should be a law also. There is national instinct. That Mr. Amani says that in a house of 1 lakh crore rupees, there should be a check and balance. This is not a, this is a welfare state in India. There should be, any step should be taken to control that amount, that any CEO should not be allowed to expand such a huge amount on a set in the house. He has to live in a single room. What he will do for the house and room in his own house? There should be a check and balance. What type of law you will do? Uh, let me uh, uh, answer that. In fact, I don't want to go uh, who has constructed which building, how many those have been spent over there. But uh, as I said, you know, as Mr. Arroyo rightly pointed out now, uh, there should be a compensation 
which you said, you know, you said that uh, yes, there should be a law regarding how much money should be paid to a particular CEO and so forth. That's why the, uh, the suggestion, in fact, uh, I think, uh, I don't know, Minister of Corporate Affairs has suggested or not, I don't remember, but there is a difference. This is very common in US practice. There should be a compensation committee for all these uh, big uh, managerial posts. That committee will decide and so how much money should be going to where, and at, at, at least if a common man being a shareholder should know what is the compensation. And the other thing is, you know, that I, that, that I know, I'm, I'm not sure what you're going to ask me. <laughs> I am not as much of that. One thing is, there should be a PIA before the Supreme Court that there should be. The Supreme Court should be full restriction on these type of expenditures. No, this is a corporate, as I said earlier, corporate government to look at not come as a law. It has come on its own, like voluntary, self-regulated private people. Part of course, they be came into the picture, then 49 came into the class, 49 came into the picture. Otherwise, there is no particular law. Some aspects will enshrine the law. The law is not there. That should be corporate practice. That should be corporate practices do be recognized. Partly written and partly as customs and duties here in India. Also. That, that, yeah, that, that is the uh, 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 any sort of no, that is the question. He's whose concept I like. That's why investor activism should be there. Investor activism should be there. Nowadays, what is happening is earlier we used to I used to have money, okay, let me pay uh, buy some share. Now institutional shareholders are coming into the picture, like you know, mutual funds, banks are coming to the picture, the Asian Number Bank, all these banks are coming to the mutual fund, okay, let me include it, you wish to have money in the shareholders, then the institutional activism, investor activism. It's all like we will talk to you later on, this is somewhere. I don't know, I don't know whether that's a difficult question, what is the question we're talking to answer? On the state of society, we should be aware of it. I uh, just like to make a point out here. Uh, what the gentleman said, uh, the element of biasness in the case of Ambani's big Tata's villa, as long as it's a family business, that element of biasness is going to be there. Just as Mr. Shainathan pointed out, that, that element of biasness has to be avoided, and institutional shareholders are the ones who can take the responsibility the way forward lies there. So perhaps, you know, as long as the element of biasness is there, we can never expect transparency in family business. So there are provisions in UK like the anti tunneling provisions. Of course, uh, we, we need to learn from other jurisdictions as well. As this uh, gentleman just pointed out, that uh, precedence and custom are uh, that I mean, they have to be seen and we got to learn from other jurisdictions. Corporate governance in India is still emerging. So I believe, as Mr. Srinivasan pointed out, uh, sir, do you agree with me on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, one question is there. One question. Uh, that is with regard to insider trading. There is no law in this country, either a central or a state, to regulate insider trading. What is, what is your proposition for that? Can you raise the hand? Yeah, he's here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with regard to insider trading, there is no central law or a state law to regulate it. So what is your uh, uh, proposition for that? That is exactly what uh, Mr. Uh, he asked about the regulation of PA is why the Supreme Court has put its stamp on the law. I think there is no law as such. That's why the PA is why the Supreme Court will make the law. No, 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 it's not Supreme Court. 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 It's not Supreme